Well, I thought I'd give you a little update, just check in on you and let you know that uh, how we're doing. Uh, also, we're going to give a little uh, devotional here shortly, so if you have your Bible handy or you want to get it or open your app to the book of 1 Thessalonians. Oh, wait a minute. I just, I just, uh, hang on a second. Sorry. Just a second. Yeah, sorry about that. I didn't know if uh, I wasn't sure of the of the governor's mandate of mask applied to uh, social media or not. Um, but all seriousness, how are you? How are you really? Five six weeks into this thing, is it wearing on you? Um, if you if you need to talk to somebody, please uh, give me a call. I was blessed yesterday. I talked about forty five minutes to. Uh, a gentleman in our church. Um, I'll give you my phone number, 717-644-7819. If you need to call, if you want me to pray with you, I'd, I've prayed with folks over the phone. I'd be glad to pray with you over the phone. If you're having a need, uh, we have folks ready and willing. If you need groceries to, to deliver groceries to you. Um, if you've lost your job and you are having trouble paying some of your bills, let me know. We can uh, help with that. Uh, if you know somebody in need, let me know. Um, please, uh, Caleb and I continue to come into the office every day. We're we're working on things that we uh, can, can get done. Um, um, I have been appreciative of uh, uh, Shauna. Shauna has been helping. Uh, she does a a children's church lesson every Sunday. Most of you do not know that, uh, but. Uh, our kids do. It's on Zoom, so they can interact and see each other. So I appreciate what Sean has been doing. Uh, my wife and I, we're fine. Uh, thanks for asking. Um, tomorrow will be our 37th wedding anniversary. Um, a couple weeks ago was my 22nd uh, anniversary here at Community Bible Church. Now we did go out uh, to celebrate. We went out to eat uh, a couple days ago. Very romantic. We drove through Popeyes and we ate in the parking lot. So we enjoyed it. Uh, we enjoyed it uh, quite a bit. Uh, we continue to keep in touch with those folks who can't do what you're doing right now, who don't have any, the internet. We have about eight, nine. Um, people who, who don't have a computer. Uh, we are, have been sending them uh, DVDs of the sermons. Uh, I've been sending them a, a personal letter each week and uh, all the Bible studies and things that we send out email, uh, I've been printing off and sending to them. As you know, the, the, the governor has said that perhaps May 8th we might Loose some of the restrictions. Um, I don't know what that means about church at the moment, about meeting together uh, back in our um, worship center. Uh, I, I think it, at least it's light at the end of the tunnel. I follow closely um, various uh, Christian legal organizations like uh, Alliance Defending Freedom and Christian law and, and um, several others that um, are being very diligent about protecting the rights of churches during this time, our right of freedom of worship and freedom of speech and freedom of assembly. Um, so there have been some states where that's become a problem uh, and uh, action has been needed. Um, I'm still comfortable at the moment, believing that uh, we are voluntarily choosing not to meet together. Um, I don't feel singled out. I don't think churches have been singled out, at least in uh, our situation. And, um, but I will assure, assure you that I am keeping close track of developments around the country. And I, I, I'm praying with you that uh, soon this will end and we can uh, get back uh, together. 
I'd like to take a moment and pray, if you would uh, allow me, and uh, you certainly can pray along with me. Now, Lord, I pray specifically for those who are listening to me at this very moment. I pray that you would encourage their hearts. I pray that you would strengthen their faith. I pray that your presence would be real there with them. Some perhaps live alone. Some it's just uh, the two of them. Some it's the kids uh, are with them, Lord. I just, I just pray that regardless of the physical presence in the house, that they would feel the presence of the Lord to know that you have not forsaken us. And Lord, for those who can't hear my voice, but in our congregation, Lord, we pray for them. We pray that you would uh, meet their needs. Um, we pray for all of us that that you would keep us, keep us healthy. Lord, that uh, you would uh, use this to draw us closer to you. You use this to give us opportunities to be uh, people of hope who witness to a greater truth uh, that we are confident in Christ and uh, we do not fear death like others uh, because of our hope in the resurrection of the dead and, and salvation through Christ. Lord, I do pray specifically for those I had mentioned earlier that are shut in and, and don't have uh, uh, the internet. Um, Lord, uh, I, I just pray that you would encourage them. And and Lord, uh, if, if, if somebody from the church, uh, now we've been calling people, and uh, again, we don't know of anybody that's, that's struggling, but people don't always tell you when they're struggling. So I would pray that if, we don't know that their neighbors would uh, know and be available to help. Lord, I pray for those in our church who are on the front lines, doctors, nurses, Lord, other medical uh, personnel. Lord, again, keep them healthy, protect them. Um, Lord, we are grateful that you've given to mankind uh, knowledge and common grace uh, that, that allows us to alleviate pain and treat disease, God. And I pray for those who are researching um, how to end this uh, pandemic, that you'd give them wisdom. Lord, for our leaders, I wouldn't want to be our leaders. I wouldn't want to be in their position right now. I, re I really would not. For our president, for our governor, for our representatives, God, these are tough times. And and uh, it's impossible to know exactly what to do. We all have our differing opinions of the Lord, but I'm grateful that I'm not uh, in charge. And I pray for those who are in charge. Lord, we believe the Bible teaches that you have put them in charge. And we are to um, obey them unless they specifically contradict uh, your commands. Lord, we do pray that you would safeguard our freedoms. This is an opportunity, of course, for many of our freedoms to become uh, negotiable to some and uh, to be under attack by others. Uh, Lord, uh, we just pray that you would help us to keep our freedoms and our liberty. And God, we finish with uh, praying that your will would be done. God, may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, Paul writes these words. But we, brethren, having been taken away from you for a short while, in person, not in spirit, were all the more eager with great desire to see your face. That's verse 17. Isn't that great? <laughs> I know that feeling. I'm eager to see your face. I I have a great desire to see your face. You know, social media isn't very social, is it? In fact, uh, I was talking to uh, another brother, uh, one of our older members, uh, uh, this week. He just turned 87. And uh, he does not have 
of the computer. So he gets, uh, he and his wife get the DVDs. And I said to him on the phone, I said, you know, um, he's getting at least to see me, uh, you know, once a week. And those of you who are online, you're seeing me at least once a week, sometimes twice a week, but I'm not seeing you at all. Right. Um, I'm not seeing you at all. There's nothing social about, uh, um, social media. I mean, uh, this is not face to face. And, and that's what Paul was going through with the church at, uh, Thessalonica. Um, he had been forced to leave. You can read about that in Acts 17, but because of, uh, great persecution, he was, he, the brother, the brethren made him flee for his life, but um, what's interesting in that verse here, it says, um, but we brethren having been taken away from you. What's interesting is that phrase taking away, taken away, uh, or torn away, or the King James uses a great old word bereft. We are bereft of you. Um, the Greek word translated as taken away is where our English word orphan comes from. We have all been made orphans. It's like we have lost our family. In fact, Paul brings up this imagery of family. He says, now, we brethren, we're a family. We are brothers and sisters uh, in Christ. Um, family imagery, imagery is often used for the church. In fact, Paul even used mothering uh, in chapter 2, verse 7. He says, But we prove to be gentle among you as a nursing mother tenderly, uh, tenderly cares for her own children. So there's the idea of, of, of mom. In verse 11, he says, Just as you know that we were exhorting and encouraging and imploring each of you as a father with his own children. So there's, this, there, this, there's these metaphors of family. Mom, dad, brothers, and sisters. The church is like a family, and right now we cannot see each other face to face. We are, we've been made orphans. We've experienced the feeling of, of, of sudden loss. We're, we're experiencing the feeling of suddenly be, being torn away from each other, a feeling of, of a loss of family. Now, Paul goes on in verse 19 to talk about the joy we will all have when we are all together in the presence of the Lord Jesus. Now, he's talking about a future day. Uh, he's talking about when we will be with Jesus uh, forever together, but certainly we're looking forward to the joy of all being together uh, in this present age, when, when, when we can all get back to worshiping uh, together. We have a spiritual communion with Christ. We understand that. Uh, Christ is where we are at. We, we we know that, but that's that's spiritually. We we long and 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 we're still in Christ together, where you're at, where I'm at. But Paul talks in chapter four of this chapter about that day when we will um, rise from the dead and we'll meet one another uh, in the clouds with the Lord Jesus, and we'll all be with the Lord bodily. There's just something about being physically together so the resurrection of christ was physical he has a he has a body and we're getting new bodies and one day again we will all be together uh, not just in spirit but in body and right now we we're kind of together in spirit but we look forward to when we can be together in uh, body now though paul is distant from them he hasn't forgotten about them it is not a case of out of sight out of mind Again, I, I understand what Paul's what's is saying here. This is how I feel. He says in uh, um, chapter 3, verse 10, As we day and night keep praying most earnestly that we may see your face and may complete what is lacking in your faith. So he, he, he wants, again, to see them face to face he hasn't forgotten about them he wants to um, help them continue on their spiritual journey
social media of his day was to write letters, right? Now we're, we're using social media to an extent. I, I you know, um, we're using Facebook and email and, uh, and YouTube. Okay. That's the social media of our day. And he was using the social media of his day. Now the social media of his day, of course, was simply to write a letter, but that's what he was doing. Uh, he was writing a letter and he was glad he could write them a letter, but he realized that, that just writing a letter or using social media was not the same as face to face, Facebook, Zoom, uh, video, uh, FaceTime, Skype. It's not the same as face to face. He, he, he wanted to use the tools available. He wrote them a letter but he realized that it did not substitute for face-to-face. -face. So, in fact, he encourages them to take advantage of this face-to-face -face time, okay, that they had without him, and he was looking forward to when he could join in it. Now, how does he put that? Well, chapter 5, verse 26, greet all the brethren with a holy kiss, okay? In other words, you know, no, we've been saying to the grandkids, we haven't seen our grandkids either, so... You know, it's been five weeks now. Um, so when we talk to, uh, you know, their parents, uh, their mom, you know, give them a kiss for us, right? Give them a kiss for us. So Paul kind of saying, hey, give, give, you know, g hey, give everybody a kiss for me. Um, now, Dr. Fauci wants us to quit shaking hands when this is over. Uh, I don't know what he would think of, uh, of uh, giving each other a holy kiss. Paul is writing because he is concerned about them. He is afraid that the devil will take advantage of this. Okay. Um, chapter 2, verse 18. For we wanted to come to you, I, Paul, more than once. And yet Satan has hindered us. Satan would love to keep us separated. Now, I, I'm concerned about your physical well-being, but I'm also afraid for you spiritually. Separation is not good spiritually. Not being able to come uh, to congregational worship is not good. And I'm worried that the devil will, will use that. Um, chapter 3, verse 5. For this reason, when I could endure it no longer, I also sent to find out about your faith. For fear that the tempter might have tempted you and your labor would be in vain. Verse 8. For now we really live if you stand firm in the Lord. So I am also concerned about your faith. How's your faith? How's your faith? Is your faith strong or not? You may be struggling, not just about the circumstances. We're all struggling about the circumstances, but I'm worried you may be struggling spiritually. Um, Christians are not designed to live apart from each other. In fact, the very word church means assembly. It means a called out assembly we are to assemble together satan doesn't want us to assemble together satan wants you to skip church he doesn't want you to go to church he's kind of he's kind of glad for this situation that we have right now he wants to he's a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour he he wants to destroy your faith hope and love he wants to weaken your faith and he wants to weaken, be honest with you, he wants to weaken community bible church you know, in, in times of tragedy, in normal times of tragedy, we rush to people's aid. But in this in this pandemic, we, we can't even do that. I, we've had folks in the hospital, and I'm not allowed to go see them. Um, I, I regularly visit our shut-ins. I'm not allowed to go see our shut-ins. Now, we can talk on the phone and text, and we're glad for that. But so much of the Christian life is... To be lived face to face, and Satan wants to use this absence, this the fact that we've been orphaned, to attack our faith. 
I mean, even even Job's friends, as lousy as they were, at least the the best thing they did was they went and sat with him for days. Job has uh, is having a trial, and his friends just sat there and didn't say anything for days. Now, eventually, what they said, some of them wasn't <laughs> wasn't helpful, but it was just the fact that they were sitting there, right? You know, and and for me not to be able to sit, and, and for us not to be able to sit together, and, and sit with someone at the hospital, or sit with the family in the waiting room, or or whatever, um, Satan wants to use that to attack our church to attack our faith um so like paul i'm concerned for you and for your faith the devil certainly has a purpose in this but god also has a greater purpose and god will accomplish his purpose his purpose the devil wants to use this to weaken your marriage he wants to use this to damage parent and child relationship but god wants to use it for good um he wants to use this to strengthen our relationships, to strengthen our marriage. You know, many of you have been gathering the family together for family worship to listen to the sermon or even the, the, the kids' junior church. Uh, um, that's good. Let's continue family worship, even when we can go back to 1849 South Forge Road. Let's keep it in our houses. Let's keep this going. Um Satan wants to use this maybe to convince you that you don't need church. This is my one, this is one thing I'm really worried about, okay, is, is the fact that say, hey, you know what? I can go to church by watching TV at home. I can stay in my pajamas and sleep in. It's not the same. Um, worship is not just rely, relaying information. It's more than that. Um you remember Joseph told his brothers that uh, you meant this for evil, but God meant it for good. God brings good out of evil. God brings good out of evil. And you know how I know that? This letter. Follow me. Because Paul could not see them face to face, he wrote a letter. Now, if he could have seen them face to face, he would not have written the letter. But because he wrote the letter, we have it. It's called First Thessalonians. And tens of thousands of churches have been blessed by this letter that should not have happened if Satan hadn't hindered him from being there with him. Wow. Wow. So I'm praying that this separation makes us all the more desirous to meet together. And I'm praying that um, when this is over, you'll want to come to church more, not less.